If you love liberty, declare your independence by signing the Shire Society Declaration at shiresociety.com. House Bill 152. I would like to request that I would like to request that uh, on this and subsequent bills today, you speak once, one time. You have one opportunity. Make, it, make the best of it. Uh, if for some reason you have compelling things that you need to say, uh, make that request of me and I'll make the decision. All right? All right. So we'll open the hearing on House Bill 152 relative to wholesale distributors of alcoholic beverages. Representative Hunt. Okay, that's why I am better. I'm going to be better now. <laughs> this, is, uh, this is on the House Committee representative. <laughs> okay. I, uh, I, this one I do know very well uh, because I actually wrote this language. So I can, I can <laughs> Alright, so um, yeah, we start by is disregard the fiscal note because the fiscal note was based on the original bill that was introduced. The original bill uh, was introduced because um, as much as we do love the three-tier system, and the essence as much as we do maintain it, um, there are some hiccups in the three-tier system. And one of those hiccups would be if Senator Sanborn decided that he wanted to have a uh, special night at his restaurant and decided that he would like to have a Korean night and wish he was going to have a Korean menu and then said, boy, wouldn't it be nice to have some Korean beer? And he calls up his local beer distributors and they all say, sorry, we don't carry Korean beer. Have. Under the three tier system, they could say that. They have that power. There was another law that I sponsored seemingly 20 years ago, since like a long time ago, <laughs> called the direct shipping law that allowed consumers to get that Korean beer. So those consumers could have gotten the Korean beer. But they would not be allowed to bring that Korean beer into the restaurant where they would be allowed to bring wine. If they, even they bought the wine to the direct shipper, they're allowed to bring in a bottle of wine to a restaurant ahead of time, even though it's not available to the other systems. So we have all these in, in, well, inequalities, or what was the discrepancies? The things that, you know, it's not, the three tier wasn't as pure, it wasn't as simple as straightforward. So, what we had done before was, was we were going to allow a peer, uh, excuse me, an on premise licensee to be able to order that beer in direction. Uh, the beer distributors were very concerned uh, that they saw this as a can of worms, again, trampling on the three tier system. And so, um, through uh, several conversations I had, um, we keep up with this language. Um, I will be frank, I was rather surprised, because you will see on line four, there's a word that normally you don't like to see, people don't normally like to accept, which says, shall. But the beer distributors feel that, uh, and I understand that they are going to want to wordsmith this a little bit more, uh, they want to really look at it. I think they finally took it up to legal and realized that maybe my, my articulate language was not perfect. Um, but that the underlying concept is that Senator Sanborn would be able to call up his local beer distributor and say, um, I know of this distributor in New York, somewhere else, who's got the Korean beer. Would you be willing to not be willing? You will order it. This is the price it's going to be at. We agree upon the price. And voila, that distributor will order that beer in and distribute it and do, distribute it to his restaurant just in time for Korean night. All right. Thank you. Senator Sam a question. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Representative. And for the record, since the good representative from Ridge is suggesting that I would derive a benefit from this, <laughs> no, which I'm sure he does not imply, but nevertheless, based upon our Byzantine current ethics laws, I am compelled 
to say that I do not agree with his assessment, but nevertheless, he raises the question, so therefore I'm um, suggesting I may or may not have a conflict, but I'm still going to participate. So to my question, Representative, because it is a rare day, and I can say maybe the first day in the eight years I've been haunting the halls of this fine building, that the great representative from Bedford and I might be at a crossroads. I'm very surprised by that. So while I look forward to him also answering the question, I would like to see yours as well, okay. that how can we fight for and believe in a free market where government is not dictating operation and behavior by an organization, yet today we're being faced with a question of forcing private businesses to provide a product which they don't readily typically or would provide. Because they want it. They want this protectionism that we have designed into our system, the free tier system. They have something that is very unique. And I would venture to say there is no other business in the state of New Hampshire. There is no other industry that has so much chapter law that is specifically designed for just yes. that. And yes, there is a bunch of other shallows. And those shallows are something that they, over time, have agreed to. For instance, they shall collect the beer tax. But then they asked us to make sure that they could cut off people if they don't pay in 15 days. And we readily agreed. So we have absolutely passed this law. And I will take on your first comment that, yes, um, I, and I was going to say that it was you and your wife, and yes, <laughs> she also disclosed that she might potentially have a conflict. I'm and sure. yes, she also, sure. as a member of our committee, agreed that she would participate in the discussion of this legislation. Thank you. Other questions? Just so I understand this, let's say at my end, which hopefully opens June 1st, it hasn't happened. <laughs> um, Treated it. I we have a guest who requests three six packs of a particular type of innocent gun beer that isn't carried in the state of New Hampshire. I go to the state. I say I need three sixes of this, and the state would be required to get that. Um, I would venture to say they'll probably insist on doing a case. Uh -huh. So they won't. The three six packs might be a little problem. But yes, they would be able to order that very carefully. But the, the theoretically, the, the believe you me, I thought the direct shipping one was the right answer here. But the beer distributors would prefer to us to do it this way. The beer distributors. So yeah, just the just remember the three tier that, I, yeah, yeah. that the last speaker said I was trying to tear down tear apart the three tier. I understand. I, I understand. I, I'm actually trying to work within this. So a case minimum, so I'd have an extra six. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I mean, you know, let's face it, the three-tier, I mean, the appears when you look at the direct shipping law, um, I really did not understand their concerns because it's so expensive to have out, you know, to have a check. Because you're talking about weight. I mean, just the, the weight alone is an excess cost. But the direct shipping law has been very successful. We bring in over a million dollars a year, and I'm very proud of being the sponsor of that legislation. And, and so therefore, I will always say the direct shipping law is the right answer. However, this is the way that we, without upsetting the whole region, without you know, trying to trample on the system, um, yes, they have the whole law is absolutely written as to protections. And I would also say to that was previous the previous comment before. And that is, I used to say liquor laws are upside down laws. And that is, most of the laws we pass here, everything's legal until we say you can't do it. Liquor is not. Liquor is everything mother may I. You can't do anything until we say yes you can. And then I found out zoning's the same way. <laughs> All right. Any further questions? Um, if you're doing this for beer, why are, you, why are we not also doing this for wine and distilled spirits as well? It's not a problem. Right now, right now, when I wrote when I wrote that direct shipping law, believe it or not, the liquor commission had no problems allowing a licensee, an on-premise licensee, 
to, to, to get wine to the direct shipping line. Oh. Uh, and, uh, and distilled spirits? And distilled spirits. Vodka or whatever? Direct ship? You wouldn't bother because it, it's too expensive. You would but if it again if it's could be something you need. You want to do a special scotch night and you want to get some rare scotches that you cannot get, and you absolutely can order. And as a matter of fact, not only have the direct shipping law, we have a whole nother statute in which they can help supply it for you. They can actually help try to find it for you. Final follow-up. So my final follow-up is if if you're if you are that comfortable with the direct shipping laws. Why create yet another scheme? Why not just take beer and put bake it into the direct ship laws and let it's the ships fall within it? Very simple. I want, I want this to pass. And this is the one thing that the beer distributors were okay with. Thank you, parents. Further questions? <laughs> Thank you, sir. Appreciate yeah. it. All right. Uh, Representative Keith Murphy. Uh, supporting wishing to speak. Welcome, Mr. President. Thank you, Chairman. Keith Murphy from Bedford. My comments will be brief today. Uh, I likewise must disclose that I may or may have a conflict. If this were to actually pass, it's conceivable that I would like to order a case of a beer that I cannot otherwise obtain. Um, the problem that this bill comes to address is that New Hampshire is by far the most expensive market to bring a beer into in the Northeast. Just by way of comparison, Maine, the fee is $1,000 one time for the brewer and a $10 per label one time fee for the $1 annual renewal. Massachusetts, $200 for the first 5,000 cases, $500 over 5,000 cases with no legal fee. Connecticut, $200 per label for three years. Vermont, $2,200 uh, as many breweries as the importer or distributor represents, no per label fee. New Hampshire, which is the smallest market other than uh, basically Pilot, Pilot Maine and smaller than our larger than mine. New Hampshire, $1,200 per year for under 15,000 barrels, $1,692 for over 15,000 barrels. So Budweiser, Anheuser-Busch pays $1,692 a year. But if you have some brewery out of Texas that wants to bring in 50 cases of obscure beer per year here, they've got to pay. $1,200. That's ridiculous. And that, that is why, if you go into Massachusetts versus New Hampshire, you'll see a better beer selection in a Massachusetts beer store. It's a more expensive market to enter, and it's smaller. So it doesn't make any sense. That is what this, this bill comes to address. Uh, to answer your question, Senator, there is no one who believes more than I do in the free market. Agreed. This market is inherently unfree already. If you would like to amend the bill to abolish monopolies uh, that currently are enjoyed by distributorships, I would vote for that bill. Um, I, I think you would see a, a, a lot of opposition to it. Um, so given that we're dealing with an inherently unfree market, uh, dealing with the fact that we've got uh, people with a lot of vested interest in keeping the distributor model in place, I think this is the best approach. Thank you for your attention. Further questions? All right. Thank you. Thank you, David, sir. All right, Daryl Perry. Supports and wishes to speak. Back. Thank you. Again, for the record, Daryl Perry, CEO of Liberty Lobby LLC. And Senator Sanborn, you uh, earlier mentioned that the word shall on line four you take exception with. Uh, and generally I would as well. Uh, however, if you read the, not the immediate word after, but skip a word and then the next uh, five words, at a mutually agreed price. So if, since you've already been used as an example, I'll use you as an example. If I uh, go to one of your facilities and say, I would like a case of Big Blue Van, which is a beer made in Arizona, can't really get it out of, you know, outside of the Southwest, and you call up the brewery and they say, we'll sell you a case for $1,000, and you don't agree to that price, you are not obligated to purchase the beer at that price. It's only once you actually come to an agreement that you would then have to make that purchase. 
And you can always call up the customer and say, hey, they're offering this at X price, are you willing to pay? And if they say no, then there's no obligation that anything be purchased. Uh, as Representative Murphy said, New Hampshire is a very expensive place for uh, beer companies to wind up moving into. And luckily, you guys have a bill that I am not planning to testify on uh, to the next hearing, HB uh, 549, deals with those beverage vendor fees that I believe might wind up making it a little cheaper for new beverages to be available in New Hampshire. Uh, so I see this sort of as a package deal, even though it's separate bills, they do sort of go hand in hand to wind up making it cheaper for new beers to be available, as well as make it a little bit easier for uh, premises to get things that currently they cannot find through a distributor. So I support both of these, and I'll answer any questions. Any questions? Very good. Thank you. Appreciate your testimony. Scott Shire supports, wishes to speak. Mr. Shire. Good afternoon. Uh, thank you. I'm trying to be brief on this one too. Um, essentially, what we have here is a collaboration of uh, different stakeholders trying to work out a bigger problem in the state within the beer industry. And while I represent the beer distributors, I'm in touch with people in the wine business and people who make cider and sort of our collective good. And I think sometimes we to get lumped into a certain category and want to, to clear everybody that a lot of the bills that you're going to see today are a result of uh, what started as an industry summit and then conversation continued and are now actually continuing on a regular basis through the Liquor Commission's efforts and an RSA uh, repopulation process that's happening on a regular basis with feedback from all stakeholders, wine, beer, spirits, retailers, uh, business associations, social groups, etc. So I, I think these are all good steps in the right direction. While we're not um, not going to make anything perfect, um, I think we're um, we're in agreement that this may solve the problem. Not only for you know licensees and the on-premise who want to do specialty ethnic nights with beer, but more for people like some of the specialty beer retailers that are in the back of the room that are concerned about not being competitive with states like Massachusetts, Vermont, and Maine. Um, and you know, yes, we do agree with direct shipping to licensees. Um, any consumer in the state of New Hampshire can direct ship any kind of beer they want to themselves in the state under the current statute. And, uh, and I will add that the state is the only true monopoly uh, when it comes to liquor. Um, they have uh, the exclusive right to sell spirits in their stores. And yes, there are some oligopolies that exist in the rest of the state. And yes, we do. Do, we are concerned and we do care about the future of, of our business. Um, a lot of it's linked to tourism. So. We've got, uh, got feedback from other stakeholders, um, not ourselves, that we needed to, uh, to address some of the language and wordsmith it, which we're working on right now. Um, this is not our bill. This is not the beer distributor's bill. We just happen to be the face of it. We came to this uh, after working with retail partners, uh, on and off premise licensees, and, uh, and folks in, in the house, uh, uh, Representative Hunt and Representative Murphy specifically. So we're trying to uh, to work this out so everybody gets what they need. Questions? So the bill in its current form is still under revision or? It is, yeah. I think okay. we just got some feedback on Friday and we wanted, to, there's a couple of parties that wanted to run through legal departments and so forth and so on. So um, we should have something by the end of this week and uh, we can get it back to you for the next time we meet. Thank you. Look forward to that. Any other questions? Thank you, sir. Thank you. Uh, both supporting and not wishing to speak, Mark and Melanie Foster of the Beer Store. Um, supporting and wishing to speak is Greg Moore of AFP New Hampshire. Mr. Moore. Welcome. Good morning, Chairman, members of the committee. Thank you for the opportunity to speak here today. For the record, my name is Greg Moore. I'm the State Director for Maryland for Prosperity. Um, we are here today in support of uh, Senate Bill 152 because even in its current form, we feel it uh, adds three benefits. First and foremost, it gives consumers more choice. Secondly, it makes our, makes our businesses here in New Hampshire more competitive. And thirdly, ultimately, it will result in more revenue without raising tax or fee, which from our perspective is a win-win-win. Our preference was the original version of this bill, which allowed, uh, which expanded the direct shipper uh, provisions in state law. We thought that was a better solution, but 
as Representative Hunts likes to say, sometimes politics is the art of what's possible. And uh, to the extent that this bill does improve the conditions, I will tell you that um, at a personal level, I am someone who likes craft beer. I don't drink wine, I don't drink liquor, I don't drink bad beer. And unfortunately, there are a lot of craft beers that are simply inaccessible. And there are a lot of good, solid beer stores, as well as restaurants who offer high beer, but they simply can't get access to a number of, of really good beers. And uh, whether it's traveling to a place like the beer store, or First Better Beer, or Candy Road Convenience, or Post in Northampton, or Cask and Keg in Laconia, there are a lot of great stores that simply can't get access to a lot of really good beers. And at a personal level, what I do, my solution is I get a couple of friends uh, who all have the same, uh, the same uh, uh, choices about, about beer as I do. About every two or three months, we drive down to Massachusetts and buy some beer that we can't get here. Now, what happens then? Obviously, it's inconveniencing the consumer, number one. Number two, it's impacting the, the business owners who otherwise would have had the business here in New Hampshire. Number three, it's sending beer tax revenue to Massachusetts or Maine, because I know Maine has much easier, uh, much easier regulatory scheme to get access to a lot of these small, small, uh, small batch breweries that don't ship literally hundreds and hundreds of uh, barrels each year. At the end of the day, uh, I understand from the, from the distributor's perspective why they might not want to carry an inventory for, for these, a number of these small uh, brewers, but from our perspective, anything that adds choice um, enhances uh, com uh, competition or, uh, and, and potentially adds revenue to the state of New Hampshire to positive. So with that, I'd be happy to answer any questions. Questions of Mr. Moore. Thank you very much for your testimony. All right, is there anyone that I may have missed who wishes to speak for or against House Bill 152? So I will have a hearing on House Bill 152. We'd like to invite you to visit freekeen.com. Freekeen.com features audio, video, and blogs chronicling the transition to a voluntary society. Freekeen.com also has comments and discussion forums so you can be heard. Freekeen.com. I should be in Keene, New Hampshire with the Free Staters.